What are the best and worst back exercises for muscle growth? Well, in this video, I'll be ranking 20 of the most popular movements on a tier list from S for super to F for fail. And at the end, I'll crown one exercise as the best of the best, raising it to S tier plus, and one as the worst of the worst, demoting it to F tier hell. And to make sure your favorite back exercise doesn't end up in F tier, it'll need to tick three boxes. One, it needs to give a big stretch with high tension. If it doesn't give me a good stretch or provide high tension, it's going in F tier, no exceptions. Two, it needs to feel good. This means it doesn't cause pain and it has a smooth resistance profile. Giving a good pump and a nice mind-muscle connection wouldn't hurt either. Three, it must have a simple progression. If you can't easily add weight or reps over time, it's getting knocked down. All right, let's get the worst out of the way. Renegade rows. These are not good for building muscle. First, they don't provide a good stretch because you'll come up solid against the floor. They don't offer maximum tension to your back because other muscles have to work so hard just to keep your balance, which makes it hard to get a good back pump. Sorry, renegade rows are going in F tier. This is because the renegade row is trying to combine two exercises into one, a plank and a dumbbell row. Planks are good for your core and rows are great for your back. But when you put them together, you end up watering down the amount of tension that your back receives. And the same goes for other two-in-one combination exercises like the dumbbell row plus curl or the dumbbell row plus press or the dumbbell row plus kickback. This is because the smaller muscle in the pair will always be so much weaker than your back, so it'll always give out first. This leaves your back totally understimulated. These exercises will burn some calories and they will grow the weaker muscle in the pair, but they aren't good back builders. They're all going in F tier. Okay, what about the deadlift? Well, I am a big fan of the deadlift. I think it's one of the best exercises for building total body strength. However, when we look at the criteria for an S tier back builder, it doesn't score too well. It doesn't stretch your lats or mid-back much at all. It also doesn't take your lats or traps through an active range of motion. So any tension they do receive is isometric. And I don't know about you, but deadlifts don't give me a great back pump. And while they are easy to overload, you can always add some weight or some reps, that's usually because your hamstrings and glutes are getting stronger, not necessarily your back. As a back builder, the deadlift is going in C tier. I'm not putting it in D or F tier just because it will beef up your spinal erectors and thicken up that lower part of your back. But as a pure back hypertrophy exercise, I do think there are far better options. Now, if this were a lower body day, I'd probably put the deadlift in A or B tier, especially if it's done with a well-controlled negative. And since the above the knee rack pull is basically just a deadlift with less range of motion, it's going in D tier, except since it often damages gym equipment, hogs plates, and unless your name is Bro Jeff, feels pretty terrible, I'm gonna go ahead and move it to F tier. Okay, you're probably ready for some better exercises. So let's start with the wide grip pull-up. It offers high tension throughout the range of motion and a deep stretch at the bottom. It feels good and you should get a nice back pump. However, pull-ups do have a tricky resistance profile. They feel very easy at the bottom and very hard at the top. This makes for not the smoothest feel. That said, they are very good for progression as you can easily add one rep each workout or add some load with a weight belt. They also look cool and I really respect pull-up strength. Wide grip pull-ups are going in A tier. Neutral grip pull-ups have all the upsides of wide grip pull-ups with slightly more lat emphasis. They're also going in A tier. Chin-ups with a palms up grip shift some back tension to your biceps. So while they are still a great upper body exercise, I'm putting them in B tier for the back specifically. Next, pull downs. We've got wide grip lat pull downs, neutral grip lat pull downs, and half kneeling one arm lat pull downs. Wide grip lat pull downs offer a big stretch on your lats. They provide smooth, even tension throughout the range of motion. They feel great. Plus you get to sit down, which is nice and stable. And you get a fantastic combination of both lat and mid trap activation. And you can easily overload them by increasing the pin weight. The wide grip pull down is our first exercise being awarded to S tier. Neutral grip pull downs have all the same upsides of wide grip pull downs, except they emphasize your lats over the mid traps, especially if you think about driving your elbows down. So they're also going in S tier. Half kneeling one arm lat pull downs are heralded as being oh so optimal online. So let's see how they do. High stretch, check. High tension, check. Good feel, at least for me, check and they're easy to overload. You can easily add a rep each week and then some weight as you get stronger. There is a little less stability here than on a pull down machine. However, you can overcome that by bracing against your knee or against an inclined bench. Plus being able to focus on one lat at a time is great for preventing asymmetries. So while I'm tempted to put them in A tier, I'm gonna be lenient and put them in S tier as well. Now the crossbody lat pull around is a spin on the same movement where you twist your torso by 90 degrees so that you're pulling the cable across your body. This will increase the stretch on your lats even further. 
However, I find that despite the amazing stretch, a lot of people find the movement a bit awkward, especially at first. So I'm gonna leave these in A tier. Okay, let's cover some of the most popular row variations. Up first, the barbell row. It stretches your back quite well and it offers high tension. However, because it's not the most stable exercise, that tension will be dispersed to other stabilizing muscles like your calves, glutes, and low back just to keep balance. This isn't a huge deal. Your back will still get hammered and you can still overload this movement from week to week. But I don't think it's the best row variation and I don't even think it's the best barbell row variation. So the standard barbell row is going in B tier. The Yates row is basically just a barbell row with a more upright posture and with looser technique. Of course, it's named after bodybuilding legend and six-time Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates. While the looser form will help you load more weight, it doesn't actually guarantee more tension to your back muscles because of momentum coming from your hips. And the more upright posture actually reduces the stretch on your lats and mid traps. Sorry, Dorian, the Yates row is going in C tier. The Penlay row is essentially the opposite of the Yates row. Instead of going more upright, you go more bent over. This is good because it places your lats under a higher degree of stretch and tension. It also allows for more consistent progression since your form is tighter. So assuming you do them with a controlled negative, I think they belong in B tier. Although I could easily nudge them into A tier if we factor in strength development. They're just not quite stable enough as a pure hypertrophy exercise for my taste. So yeah, they're gonna stay in B tier. The deficit penlay row is a penlay row where you stand on something like a bumper plate. This allows you to go deeper on the negative, meaning more stretch on your lats. I'm gonna put these in A tier. All right, the Meadows row, named after the late, great John Meadows, who is someone who taught me so much. So let's see. It stretches your back a ton. It absolutely smashes your mid back with super high tension. And as long as you brace against your knee, you'll be nice and stable. The mid back pump you'll get from these is unmatched. And as a bonus, you get to work on each side individually. This is definitely a personal favorite and easily belongs in S tier for me. The inverted row is basically an upside down row where you pull your own body instead of pulling some weight. They offer a pretty amazing stretch at the bottom and I can't lie, they feel pretty great too. If you set it up right, you should feel nice and locked in and you should be able to feel a strong mind muscle connection with your back. However, they're getting knocked down for progression. While you can have a training partner load some weight in your lap, this also makes the movement feel really awkward, for me at least. And then without the weight, you're stuck with doing super high reps, which is fine, but it is suboptimal once you go above 30 or 40 reps. So despite some positive aspects, I'm gonna put inverted rows in C tier. One arm dumbbell rows, the zombie corpse of Athlean X's exercise graveyard. Obviously this exercise gets a bad rap online, but other than Athlean X, I've actually never heard another physiotherapist or exercise scientist express concerns about it. I've been doing them myself and with clients for more than a decade without a single issue. So let's see, they offer a big stretch on your lats at the bottom and they feel nice, smooth, and stable. The main issue is once your back gets decently strong, you may max out the dumbbell rack at your gym, which usually stops at hundred pounds. So they're getting knocked down slightly for progression, but I'm still gonna put them in A tier. The croc row is basically just a dumbbell row with looser form. So you use some leg drive and some momentum on the positive. Now, I'm normally not a fan of loose technique. However, where you're braced against the bench, the momentum here is actually more controlled and consistent than it normally is. Also, the momentum leans into the natural strength curve of the back quite well. It gives you some assistance in getting through the harder, top half of the range while still offering a nice stretch at the bottom. I may get some flack for this from the technique junkies, but I'm putting croc rows in A tier. Okay, freestanding T-bar rows, probably the most epic looking exercise, especially if you look like Ronnie Coleman. But the problem is, I just don't love them. They do give a nice stretch on your lats and the tension that your back gets will be high. I just find them to be annoying. Balance can be an issue once you get decently strong and the other end of the bar will often pop up if you don't have a landmine attachment. You can progress on them well by adding reps or load, but they're getting knocked down in the feels good department for me. I'm thinking C tier, but I'll go ahead and put them in B tier for Ronnie. Now, chest supported rows give you all the positives of the freestanding T-bar row, but with a much more stable and secure feel. Having your chest supported allows you to focus all the tension to your back. These are an absolute staple and should 100% be included in your bodybuilding routine. If you don't have a chest supported machine, you can do dumbbell Helms rows where you brace your chest against the back of an inclined bench. You can do these as T-bar rows or whatever machine helps you engage your back the best. Either way, chest supported rows are going in S tier for sure. 
Cable rows are another personal favorite. They may actually be the single best exercise that I know of for feeling a deep stretch on my lats, especially when I lean forward on the negative. They also give me a crazy lat pump and you can always increase the reps or weight from week to week. These are going in S tier as well. Switching to a wide grip will shift some emphasis to the mid traps, especially if you squeeze your shoulder blades together, but that's not a bad thing if that's what you're trying to target. And wide grip cable rows have all the same benefits of close grip cable rows, so they also belong in S tier. Speaking of your mid back, the rope face pull is a very popular option. It does stretch your mid back well, as long as you pull your shoulder blades apart on the negative, and you should be able to feel a strong mind muscle connection with your entire mid back. The issue is they're a bit unstable when done the conventional way because the cable is always trying to pull your body forward. And so a lot of that tension is simply lost trying to keep your balance. For this reason, the standard rope face pull is going in B tier. However, if you modify the exercise to do it either lying on the floor or by doing them seated, you eliminate that balancing requirement and you'll be able to overload them with much more tension being applied directly to your back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these variations in A tier. They're close to being in S tier, but just looking at the other exercises in S tier so far, I don't think face pulls are quite as amazing. Definitely still an exercise worth including though, for sure. The cable lat pullover or the lat prayer offers a huge stretch on your lats as long as you bend forward on the negative and you should be able to feel a strong mind muscle connection with your lats. These are better done for higher reps so they aren't as easily overloaded as some of the compound exercises we've covered but you can always add a rep here and there and the incredible mind muscle connection and the deep stretch make up for it in my opinion that said it's fairly common for people to feel their triceps taking over on this exercise but once you get the hang of the movement and learn how to engage your lats by simply driving your elbows down i do think they're a great way to get some extra lat isolation volume without causing any total body fatigue and so i'm going to put cable lat prayers in a tier now the dumbbell lat pullover is the same basic movement except with the dumbbell, you have much more tension on your lats at the bottom and very little tension at the top. Now, this isn't such a bad thing though, because the stretch is most likely the most anabolic part of the range of motion anyway. So as long as you cut out the very top end of the range of motion, I'd also put these in A tier. So out of the S tier list, if I had to crown just one exercise as the best of the best, I think I'd go with a chest supported row. It's just so good for smashing both the lats and the mid back, and there are so many effective ways to do it. And if I had to pick one exercise as the worst of the worst, it'd probably be the renegade row. As a hypertrophy exercise, there's just not enough stability to maximize tension. And if you're looking to put all this information to use with a science-based program that you can just go to the gym and execute, I'd strongly recommend picking up my 10-week pure bodybuilding program. The program got extremely high praise from other experts in the field, and it's easily my most highly rated program ever. So I'll put a link to that over here next to my head, and don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.